following information in thousands has been obtained from Christmas Lights Corp Limited's financial statements for the year, years ended December 31st. And we can see we've got 2020, 2019, and 2018. There were no preferred shares issued by Christmas Lights Corp, nor were there any dividends paid in any of the three years. And we're asked to calculate the following items for Christmas Lights Corp Limited. Round the, round the first three ratios to two decimal places and the last three ratios to one decimal place. So we're gonna compute the cash, the current cash debt coverage ratio for 2019 and 2020. So the current cash debt coverage ratio is net cash provided by operating activities divided by your average current liabilities. So our net cash provided by operating activities, we have a line right there. So let's put this here. Let's go one current cash debt coverage. So we're going to say it's going to be, so it's going to be net cash provided by operating activities divided by average current liabilities. Okay, so here we're going to say then our net cash provided by operating activities. So let's do 2019. It's going to be 102 divided by 102, sorry, divided by our average current liabilities. So we're going to average, our current liabilities are right here. So we're going to average 80 and 82 the past two years. So we, this is our cash check coverage. Do we do that right? 80, 102 divided by, oh, 102 divided by 80 plus 82. And then divided by two. 80 and 82 divided by two, because we're averaging them, obviously. Sorry, it took me a minute there. Divided by the average of 80 and 82. Okay, still not getting me the right number. Let's see, 102 divided by, it's gonna be 80 plus 82 divided by two. Try this way. Okay, let's do it this way. 102 is our top and we've got 80 plus 82 divided by two. So then now we're gonna take 102 divided by 81. It's gonna give me 1.26 times. Okay, and then 2020, 119 is the top. Then we're gonna, on the bottom, I'm gonna have the average of the next two years, which is gonna be 80 plus 85 divided by two. So now my ratio is gonna be 1.44 times. So you can see the ratio is going up. Next, we're gonna have the, next we've got the cash debt coverage ratio. So what's the difference between the current cash debt coverage ratio and the cash debt coverage ratio? It's the exact same, but we're gonna divide it by the uh, total liabilities. So this is just the cash debt coverage ratio. So 2019. We're gonna have the same thing, 102. And now we're gonna divide it by our total liabilities, which here our average is gonna be 170 plus 165 divided by two. So our ratio then is gonna be this divided by this. It's gonna be 0.61 times. And for 2020, we're gonna have 119 and our total liabilities then are going to be the average of 240 and 165 so our ratio is going to be 0.58 times 0.59 times okay 
Number three is the earnings per share for fiscal 2019 and 2020. So earnings per share, we know what this is. It's net income minus preferred dividends divided by the weighted average number of shares outstanding. So earnings per share. So we're gonna have 2019 and 2020. So we know what net income is. It says that there were no uh, preferred shares and we can see the number of shares outstanding are given to us. So we're simply gonna have net income here for 2019. It's gonna be net income of 50 divided by the number of common shares outstanding, which are 70, which is earnings per share is gonna be 71 cents. And for 2020, we're gonna have net income, which is 50 or 72 divided by 70. So we're gonna have a dollar and two cents as our earnings per share, dollar and three cents. Okay, number four, we're gonna have our price earnings ratio. Okay, and our price earnings shape ratio is the market price per share divided by the earnings per share. Okay, so let's do that, 2019 and 2020. So we're gonna have the earnings per share, which we've got up here, divided by the market, sorry, the market price per share, which we're given here, the, what does it say? The market price per share in 2019 is 1241, 12.41 divided by the earnings per share in 2019. It's gonna give me an price earnings ratio of 17.5 times, 0.4 times. And in 2020, I'm going to have the stock price of 1650 divided by divided by these earnings per share. Whoops, this one. So I'm going to get a price earnings ratio of 16 times. Okay, next I've got the times interest earned ratio for fiscal years, which is going to be the times interest earned. times interest earned is going to be income before interest and tax divided by interest charges. So let's go 2019. We're going to have income before interest and tax. So we're going to have for 2019 income before interest and tax. So we're going to have income net income before interest and tax. So we're gonna have 62 income before tax, and then we're gonna add back interest expense, which is gonna be six. So we're gonna have 62 plus six. So here we're gonna have 62 plus six, and we're gonna divide it by interest charges, which were six. So our 2019 ratio is gonna be is going to be 11.3 times. In 2020, we're going to have, let's see what we've got here, income before tax, or sorry, yeah, income before tax is 90, and interest expense is 10, so we're going to have 90 plus 10, and then our interest is 10, so our ratio is going to be, let me just fix this, it's gonna be 10 times. Okay, then free cash flow to operating cash flows for fiscal 2019 and 2020. Now, what is that? So free cash flow to operating cash flow is net cash. Net equals net cash provided by operating activities. minus capital expenditures and dividends, less capital expenditures and dividends, dividends divided by cash flow from ops. Okay, so let's do that for 2019.
2019 here is going to be our free cash flow, which is going to be, let's look up here. So we've got 102 net cash provided by operating activities plus capital expenditures. What do we have for that? Here's the capital expenditure. So it's gonna be 102 plus 20 divided by 102. So we're gonna have here, it's gonna equal 102 plus 20 divided by 102. So we're gonna have, um, this is actually a percentage. So this is gonna become 100 or 80.4%, let's see what we've got going on here. 102 plus 20 divided by 102. <clears throat> Try fixing this formula, something went wrong there. 102 plus 20, 102. Okay, this is not going well. Okay, let's see here. 102 is gonna equal 102 plus 20 divided by 102. So that is going to give me 102 minus 20, sorry, because minus the capital expenditures, that's where it was going wrong. So 102 minus 20, because we've got the free cash flow minus the capital operate minus the capital expenditures of $20. So that gives us 82. Then we're going to divide it by free cash flow or, or cash flow from operating activities. I'm sorry, that gives you 80%. And for 2020, we're going to say so cash flow from operating activities is provided right here, 119 and capital expenditures are 30. So we're gonna have 119 minus 30 divided by 119. So here we're gonna have a free cash flow percentage of 74%. 74, 75%. And that concludes all the ratios that we need to do comment on whether it's been improvement or deterioration. So I think we can see here what the improvement and the deterioration are, so we're not going to go through that. And then C says, would your answer in part B change if you were looking at the results from the perspective of an investor? Well, the focus of an investor would be on two ratios, the earnings per share and the price earnings ratio. So these two ratios would be the focus of an investor. The price earnings per share would be seen as improving. The earnings per share improving, but so would the price to earnings ratio. A decline in the ratio from 2019 to 2020 would be seen as, a, as an improvement or a reduction of risk for the price to earnings ratio. So that takes us through this ratio calculation question.